Another year has passed, and we are now entering a new decade. This is gonna have to be celebrated. And the only way to celebrate is by picking out the best anime of this decade. So that is exactly what I'm gonna be doing. Yo, what's going on guys? I'm the Anime Top Scholar, and today I present to you my favorite anime of the decade. But just doing a regular top 10 or whatever isn't exactly something I'm very keen on doing, especially since the last three videos I posted were top 10s. So instead, I'm gonna be picking my favorite anime of every year from this decade. I'm not gonna be ranking them up against each other, I just want to share what anime I enjoy the most from every year. Hopefully that sounds like something you'd enjoy. Also, don't forget to tell me what your favorite anime of the decade is in the comments. Anyways, without any further ado, let's just get into it. Starting from the beginning of the decade, we've got my favorite show from 2010, and that is Angel Beats. Angel Beats is a 13 episode drama series produced by Studio PA Works. It was directed by Seiji Kishi and written by Jun Maeda of Key Visual Novel fame. The story of Angel Beats follows a teenage boy named Yusuru Otonashi, who wakes up in a strange place that seems like a school. There he meets a rifle wielding girl named Yuri Nakamura, who tells him that he is dead, and this is the afterlife. Yusuru decides to join Yuri and her group Afterlife Battlefront, who are waging war on a girl named Tenshi and together with them, they slowly unravel the mystery of the afterlife. Now, if you know anything about Ki and Jun Maeda, you know exactly why people like this show. It's a tearjerker. I'm not someone who typically gets very emotionally attached to the shows I watch, or the characters in it, but Angel Beats is one of only a handful of shows that have managed to make me tear up. Still, the scene I remember the most from the show involves one of the girls from Afterlife Battlefront, called Masami Iwasawa. She was the cool vocalist and guitarist of the anime band called Girls Dead Monster. She sadly makes her exit from the show way too early, but I absolutely loved her story, even if it was very short. So this, as well as most of the character stories that make up this show, really touched me. Because of that, Angel Beats is my pick for the best anime of 2010. Up next, we're entering 2011, and my favorite anime from this year was definitely Fate Zero. This 25 episode anime was split up into two seasons, with season 1 being 13 episodes and season 2 being 12 episodes. Season 2 also aired in 2012, but I include it all as my 2011 pick. Sue Me. It was produced by studio Ufotable and directed by Ei Aoki, and based on a light novel written by Gen Urobuchi. Fate Zero acts as the prequel to the infamous Fate Stay Night visual novel. It tells the story of the previous Holy Grail War that took place before the events of Fate Stay Night. We follow Kiritsugu Emiya, the much-hated Magus Killer, who was hired by the Einsburn family to get them the Holy Grail, with marriage to their only daughter Iris Veal as the binding contract. If you're familiar with Fate, you are most likely also familiar with Fate Zero, arguably the best anime adaptation Fate has ever got. This was my first introduction to the Fate universe, and I know that is gonna piss a lot of Fate fans off, cause you can't watch Zero before anything else, cause it spoils the events of Heaven's Feel and all that, but what's done is done. I honestly didn't mind starting with this one though, as I feel like it does a decent job of hooking you on fate. Take the first episode for example. People love to hate it, cause it's essentially a 45 minute long exposition episode. But for someone who has no idea what fate is, it gives you a lot of useful information. Not necessarily in the most fun way you can imagine, but I appreciated it in the long run. Fate Zero is honestly an incredibly entertaining show, and it just edges out shows like Science Gate and Anohana for my favorite anime of 2011. My favorite anime of 2012 was definitely not a show I watched in 2012, but it is one that I'm very glad that I went back to check out, and that is the spin-off series Lupin III, The Woman Called Fujiko Mina. This 13 episode series produced by Studio TMS Entertainment was directed by Sayo Yamamoto. It tells the story of Fujiko, the beautiful and bewitching femme fatale thief and Lupin's first encounter with her. So just like most Lupin spin-offs, The Woman Called Fujiko Mina doesn't really worry too much about what has already been established in the Lupin franchise. And why should they? Most stuff that happens in Lupin gets thrown out after the episode is over anyways. This show, however, is one of the few versions of Lupin that tries to tell an overarching story. If you watched my videos before, you most definitely know how much I love this show. The darker feel they add, without sacrificing what makes Lupin so much fun in the first place, is why I hold this anime in such high regard. So much so that even though shows like Attack on Titan and Shinsu Kaiori came out in 2012, I just can't bring myself not to give the title of greatest anime of the year to the woman called Fujiko Mina. Now we've reached 2013. This is the year I actually started watching anime, and the anime that made the biggest impression on me from that year was Golden Time. 
This 24 episode romance drama series was produced by Studio JC staff and directed by Chiaki Khan. No relation to the infamous Satoshi Khan. Golden Time is also based on a light novel of the same name written by Yuyuko Takemiya, who people might know better as the writer behind the beloved Toradora. Golden Time follows a character named Banri Tada, a young adult entering college in Tokyo, trying to become a lawyer. Because of an accident, Banri is now suffering from amnesia, which is why he decided to leave his hometown to study in Tokyo. Just after he is getting settled into college and has made his first new friend, he runs into a beautiful girl named Koko Kaga. They get off to a bit of a bad start, but after they get to know each other better, a relationship between them sprouts. Golden Time is probably not a show that a lot of you were expecting to see on this list. Not because it's an unknown show or anything, but simply because I know people had their issues with it. And I get it. The whole amnesia thing is kinda stupid. And for most of the show, it might as well not even be a thing. The ending is also a bit iffy, with some wishing things would have taken a different turn. But it is what it is. I for one really love this show. As far as romance anime goes, this is probably one of, if not my very favorite romance anime. It did a lot of stuff that romance anime just doesn't do, and because the characters are essentially adults, they can have conversations about certain adult topics that simply doesn't happen in your average teen rom-com. Is it a perfect show? No, not at all. But it is a show that I still ended up loving a whole lot more than I expected when I first picked it up. My favorite anime of 2014 was actually not a TV series, but a movie. And that movie is called Giovanni's Island. This movie was produced by Studio Production IG and directed by Misuo Nishikubo. It's an historical drama that tells the story of the people living on the tiny island of Shikotan during World War II. This island is recognized by both Japan and Russia as belonging to them. Because of this, in the aftermath of World War II, the tiny island was invaded by the Sakhalin Oblast, with the intention of taking it over. What I love about this movie is how it handles the human side of this dispute that has been going on for quite a while. It shows us how it affected the people who lived there, but also how they were able to make it work, living side by side with people from a different country. It wasn't always pretty, but this movie shows that even cultural divides and language barriers can be overcome. It's honestly kind of a shame that this movie has been largely ignored by the anime community. I get it. It looks weird and it probably isn't a topic that a lot of people are interested in, but trust me when I say this. Giovanni's Island is a really good movie. You just need to give it a chance to show you. The anime that I love the most from 2015 is actually a sequel to a show that I originally skipped back when it started in 2014. That's right, my favorite anime of 2015 is Noragami Aragoto. I could have put Aria the Avenir here since it came out this year, and Aria is my favorite anime of all time, but I decided not to include specials. Anyways, Noragami Aragoto is a 13 episode series produced by Studio Bones, and directed by Kotaro Tamura. It continues the story of the minor deity Yato, who dreams of having millions of worshippers one day, but for now he's gonna have to make do as a delivery god. But one day, a middle school girl named Hiyori Iki tries to save Yato from getting hit by a car, and her soul ends up leaving her body. Now she gets to see the world as Yato sees it, and Yato takes on the task of returning her soul to her body. Like I said, Aragoto is a sequel to Noragami, and it's a show that I ended up loving way more than I thought I was going to. To be honest, when I first looked at Noragami on the seasonal charts, it didn't even seem like anything I would be even remotely interested in. Boy how wrong I was. The humor in this show can be a bit hit or miss at times, but the more serious beats and the action is really good. It's not super high action, like a lot of your more traditional shonen series are, but when there is a fight, it's usually a pretty big deal. I like this approach to a shonen more than I do the more traditional battle heavy style. And because of that, I think Noragami Aragoto is the best show of 2015. Now we're entering the second half of the decade, and to no one's surprise, my favorite anime of 2016 is Mob Psycho 100. This adaptation of Once manga of the same name was produced by Studio Bones and directed by Yusuru Tachikawa. It tells the story of Shigeo Mob Kageyama, an 8th grader who possesses an abundance of psychic powers. Despite this, he tries to keep those powers hidden from everyone else and tries to live as normal a life as possible, due to an incident where Mob lost control and hurt his brother. Sadly, Mob's life isn't great. He is weak-willed and gets bullied and taken advantage of a lot. Because of this, he ends up working for Reigen Arataka, a con man who poses as a psychic. He makes use of Mob's powers in his line of work, but he also acts as a bit of a moral compass for Mob and allows him to discover himself. 
Mob Psycho 100 is just an amazing anime. Just like the other adaptation of a one manga in One Punch Man before it, Mob Psycho 100 blew viewers away with its amazing production and animation. Though it did have a bit of a hard time finding its audience at first, because people were very put off by the art and character designs. Despite this initial bump in the road, Mob Psycho shows how great of a storyteller one is. He showed us that he's capable of doing more than just making wacky parodies. Mob often gets highlighted for its amazing fight sequences and cool special effects when psychic abilities are used, but I feel it doesn't get enough credit for how good it is at exploring its characters. Mob is a shy boy with no friends and seemingly no desires in life, as he has just relegated himself to a life of getting bullied and not wanting to make decisions for himself. Yet under the guidance of Regen, who is a con man, and normally someone you would consider to be a bad influence, and just taking advantage of someone like Mob, he actually does a lot to help him. It gives Mob a place where he can be himself and teaches him about rights and wrongs, as well as helping him learn how to express himself more. Honestly, I could go on and on, because Mob Psycho was just an amazing show, but I think you get it. So yeah, Mob Psycho 100 is my favorite show of 2016. In 2017, my favorite anime was honestly a very tough pick, but I ended up settling for My Hero Academia Season 2, and I know, I know, My Hero Academia is getting so much attention and love. I could have easily picked something else, like Ancient Megaspride or The Eccentric Family Season 2, which are two shows I also loved a lot from this year. But at the end of the day, I would be lying if I said I didn't love the absolute shit out of My Hero Academia Season 2. But anyways, My Hero Academia is a shounen anime spanning four seasons now that adapts the shounen jump manga of the same name, written by Kohei Horikoshi. It was produced by Studio Bones and directed by Kenji Nagasaki. My Hero Academia tells the story of Izuku Midoriya and his friends at UA High, who are all trying to become real-life heroes. This is possible because in this world, more than 80% of people are born with a quirk which grants them a special ability. In this world, being a hero has become a job that pretty much anyone would want to have. Sadly for Midoriya, there is one thing that stands in the way of him becoming a hero, and that is that he was one of the few people who was born without a quirk. But thanks to All Might, the number one hero, and Midoriya's role model, he might just have a chance at becoming a hero after all. Now, I'm sure most of you have all either already seen this show, or at the very least heard of it. This show is a bit of a breath of fresh air in the shonen genre when it first came out, as it's basically a combination of a shonen and a superhero comic. I enjoyed this take on the genre, and as I like a good underdog story, this seemed right up my alley. But it wasn't until season 2 where I really got into the show. Not because Season 1 was bad, but because to me, Season 2 is where the story really starts to get going. I ended up loving this show, and that is why it was my number one pick for Anime of the Year 2017. Rounding out the second to final year of this decade is Devilman Crybaby. This is a modern remake of the original Go Nagai manga called Devilman from 1972. Devilman Crybaby is a 10 episode ONA produced for Netflix by Saiyan Saru, and was directed by Masaki Iwasa one of my favorite anime directors. Devil May Cry Baby tells the story of Akira Fudo, a very timid boy who ends up getting possessed by a demon named Amon, and turns into Devil Man. Because of this, his personality does a complete 180, and together with his friend Ryo Asuka, they go around fighting other demons who are appearing in their world. Now, I've already made a video on Devil Man on my channel, so if you've watched that, you already know why I love this show so much. I love it because it's a dark take on the state of humanity, on the horrors of war, as well as a sharp criticism of Japan's military recruitment. Devilman often gets mistaken for being gratuitous violence for the sake of violence, but really, it's supposed to serve as a warning. It's trying to tell us that if humanity is just going to keep going down the path of war, the only thing we're going to find at the end is destruction. This is why I love this show, and Go Nagai in general. He was not afraid of going against the grain and writing manga that presented difficult topics, even though it often made him a target for people like the PTA. Devilman Crybaby is a really good modern take on this classic story, and in my opinion, Yuasa did an amazing job on it. That is why this is my best anime of 2018. Last but most certainly not least, we have my favorite anime of 2019. It's a show that has been almost universally praised in the anime community, and a sequel to an absolutely amazing show. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. That's right, my favorite anime of 2019 is Soid's Wild Zero. <laughs> Just kidding, it's actually Mob Psycho 100 Season 2. Huge surprise, I know. Season 2 of Mob Psycho was still produced by Studio Bones, and was still directed by Yusuru Tachikawa. 
Okay, so if Mob Psycho 100 was an amazing show, then Season 2 was even better. Season 1 of Mob was a really enjoyable watch, but at times the way they mixed the humor and the more serious elements of the story didn't quite work for me as well as I would have liked. But Season 2 on the other hand worked a lot better. A lot of this has to do with the fact that Season 2 was a bit more serious than Season 1 was. That's not to say that they removed all of the comedy, there are still quite a few silly gags that got a chuckle out of me, but as a whole, I would say that Season 2 was more serious than Season 1. The way it built up to the climax just really hooked me to the screen for every single episode. It's amazing just how invested I got in the story of this awkward teenage boy with psychic powers. Especially when you take into consideration that I originally hated Mob Psycho. Yes, that's right, I did not like the first three or so episodes of Season 1. Not because of the art or animation, the animation was the only thing that actually kept me from dropping the show. No, it was actually the humor in the beginning that just didn't work for me. And I thought it was just gonna be another One Punch Man, but just not as good. Oh man, how wrong I was, cause for as soon as the story properly started kicking in, I was hooked on this show. It's not good enough to make its way into my top 10 or anything, but it is probably my favorite show that I watched while it was actually airing. It's just an amazing show. And if you are one of those who was turned off by Mob's first few episodes, then maybe try giving it another shot. You just might be surprised at how much better the show gets. So those were 10 of my favorite anime of the decade. Going into this, I was expecting it to be a lot easier to pick my favorites, but it really wasn't. I wasn't even quite sure how I wanted to make this video. The first draft, I had my top 3 picks from every year and ended it with my top 5 anime of the decade but I thought that was a bit too much, so I settled on this. Hopefully you enjoyed it though. But now you've seen 10 of my favorite anime of the decade, so I want to see you put some of your favorite anime of the decade in the comments. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more anime-related content from the Anime Top Scholar himself. Peace.